Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to this uh, episode of the Four Thinkers Talk series. My name is uh, Dr. Ivo Pizzuto. I'm a professor of global economics and competitiveness at ISM Paris and the founder of Ivo Pizzuto Forward Thinking Lab. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased and very thrilled uh, to have uh, here today uh, in this uh, episode um, a distinguished marketing uh, professional and B2B marketing expert, Greta Orsi, uh, to um, help us understand the link uh, in, in this, uh, um, this special moment for technological innovation uh, between uh, AI, technology, digital transformation, and of course, uh, uh, marketing. Um, in this space, uh, generally we invite prominent and emerging entrepreneurs, company leaders, forward thinkers to share their thought provoking ideas, expertise on business, economics, innovation, entrepreneurship, marketing like today and other uh, topics. So today we are very, very thrilled, very pleased to have here Greta for this uh, uh, exciting speech. And I'm sure she will uh, uh, bring a great uh, um, wealth of knowledge uh, and experience to our discussion today. So welcome Greta, welcome to the episode. Thanks a lot, Ivo, and uh, I actually have to, to say that I'm thrilled as well for this incredible opportunity, so thanks a lot for inviting me, and uh, it's a true honor for me to be here. Thanks a and lot. And hi, everyone, of course. It's, it's, one, it's wonderful to, to have you here and, and, and to have a, 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 such an expert uh, and uh, uh, interesting profession. So... Um, Microsoft. Well, you know, we don't need, we don't need to say much about uh, the brand, the, the company. Uh, it's a well-known uh, global uh, giant, global leader. So, um, of course, it, it's not necessary an introduction for the company, but perhaps it might be interesting just to say a couple of words to introduce um, about the latest uh, developments. Uh, Microsoft as we all know, is a leading giant in the tech industry uh, and has recently achieved a significant milestone, uh, reaching a three, uh, uh, trillion, trillion dollar market capitalization, as we all know. Recently, there was this three trillion dollar market capitalization for the first time. Uh, and this remarkable achievement can be attributed in part uh, also to the bold and strategic uh, investments that the company is undertaking in the artificial intelligence space. So um, really great, great achievement. Now, in particular, under the leadership of uh, uh, the CEO Satya Nadella, Microsoft has uh, invested recently uh, important uh, funds, over 10, 11 billion in OpenAI, so important company for artificial intelligence, as we know, is the organization behind ChatGPT. And additionally, the company has strengthened its AI capabilities by hiring uh, Mustafa Saliman, the co-founder of Google DeepMind, which now is uh, adding, uh, who is adding, who is adding now the new AI division at Microsoft. So all these strategic moves uh, tell us uh, that Microsoft commitment to innovation, it's always um, very important and uh, define its prominent position in this rapidly evolving AI landscape. So great moment, uh, Greta, to discuss about AI and to discuss about, um, you know, all these transformational uh, technologies and the impact of AI in marketing because Microsoft is really in a moment of great uh, um, leadership, a great uh, uh, transformation and uh, uh, leadership in this in this area. So um, in particular, as I said, Greta, we will dive in a little bit on the cutting edge power that uh, uh, it's redefine, redefining, uh, uh, redefining the future of marketing through AI and driving uh, effectiveness, creativity and growth. So, uh, um, this is very this is very good and we would like to start by asking something about you however before we start so greta tell us something about your background um you know could you tell us something about yourself your background uh 
the journey that led you to become the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer of Microsoft Italy, how did it all start? How did you get to this uh, uh, great and exciting position? Tell us something about you. We are very curious. I'm sure the, the viewers would be very curious to know more about yourself before talking about AI, uh, generative AI, and Mark. Sure, of course. So let me try to summarize even though my journey started uh, 14 years ago. And so after graduating in international management, uh, I joined Microsoft, as I said, uh, 14 years ago through an international program for new IRS. And actually this program was uh, uh, instrumental in giving me a strong foundation and exposure to various facets uh, of the business. Over the years, uh, I've held uh, multiple roles, uh, both in uh, marketing and actually also business development, uh, and each role provided a unique perspective, uh, uh, helping me understand uh, the market uh, from different angles. So, so just uh, um, moving from one role to another one uh, helped me doing this. Uh, um, I have to say that uh, even when I was in sales role, uh, uh, as I have uh, always been very passionate about marketing, uh, I stretched uh, to actively contrib contribute to marketing projects uh, and continuously develop my skills. Uh, this diverse experience uh, was crucial in shaping my strategic vision and approach. Uh, and uh, my last role before becoming the CMO for, uh, for Microsoft uh, was uh, being a marketing advisor for Italian's main partners. Uh, and in that role, uh, I collaborated closely with them to develop uh, joint go-to-market go to uh, strategies and activities. Uh, and this really helped me um, understand uh, the, the Italian B2B market and how I could, uh, I could even provide more impact in this. Uh, however, despite I really enjoyed this role, um, I realized that uh, I wanted to have a more direct impact on the market, on the Italian market, and, uh, market and a comprehensive view of it. So when the same opposition opened up, uh, I sized the opportunity. I was uh, driven by a strong belief uh, that I could excel in this role, uh, despite, of course, the initial fears and challenges uh, that I had. Um, and I think that uh, this passion for uh, marketing uh, and, and confidence, uh, I could do a good job uh, uh, were recognized by those uh, making the decision. So that's why I'm, uh, I'm here since uh, almost two years. Well, wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's really very, very great. Uh, I appreciate that, 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 that uh, uh, description, that story. It's really beautiful. And uh, well, it's nice, first of all, to see a woman in such a leadership position, uh, which tells a lot about uh, um, the uh, culture of the organization. Uh, uh, also, um, uh, uh, the talent, uh, the, 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 you know, the um, advancement uh, and the learning. And also, to me, at least uh, uh, from, from what you hear, from what I hear is uh, the hands-on experience in uh, marketing, sales, business development. That's really an excellent background for a bridge, creating a bridge between sales and marketing. We know that uh, many companies have always challenges sometimes in uh, con connecting sales and marketing and making sure that you actually deliver the strategy and you, you work together in collaboration with these two areas. And that's a critical, you know, in many ways. So the fact that you have both experience, business development, marketing, sales, and uh, you really work very closely with partners and the business, that's really uh, top, really, that's great. That shows that you have a lot of hands on experience, both in marketing, but also in uh, uh, understanding the customers and the market. Wonderful, thank you very much. That's really, very good. Um, one of the things that uh, um, I was very impressed when um, when when we talked last time was uh, the the term the concept of growth mindset, growth mindset, which is uh, uh, a term that uh, um, uh, defines uh, uh, Microsoft culture, vision, values uh, um, of the past uh, decades, or at least uh, uh, since uh, uh, CEO Nati, Satya Nadella uh, took over the relationship of CEO. And uh, uh, in that sense, uh, that's really uh, quite uh, powerful, you know, because this growth mindset really led uh, um, Microsoft to be what it is today under the leadership of uh, um, CEO Satya Nadella. So, uh, Greta, could you delve a little bit into the practical aspects of what uh, Microsoft growth mindset is all about? How does this philosophy of management 
and, and, and leadership empower your team to drive uh, growth innovation while maintaining a clear focus on you know, accountability, responsibility, uh, development, uh, fostering collaborative teamworks and uh, high ethical standards. So this is a good one, and I really like to answer. Also, because in this 14th, uh, 14 year, I really lived this cultural challenge. And uh, I can say that Microsoft growth mindset uh, is all about uh, embracing challenges, uh, learning from feedback, uh, and also continuously improving. But uh, practically, practically, this means uh, creating an, invite, uh, an invite, uh, environment sorry, uh, where every team member feels empowered, this is a word that I like, uh, to take risks uh, and innovate without fear of failure. And I think that without fear of failure is a crucial part of it. As we are encouraged to experiment and take risks, uh, and we see challenges uh, as an opportunity to grow for growth. So this means that uh, it's uh, safe to fail as long as we learn from uh, those experiences. And trust me, this is a huge cultural change. Uh, this philosophy drives, of course, innovation as we are more likely to experiment uh, and therefore to develop uh, creative solutions. Uh, and also responsibility is a key in our growth mindset uh, as we are not just focused on achieving results, uh, which are of course important, uh, but also mindful uh, of the broader impact of our work. Uh, and uh, this includes considering also ethical implications uh, and maintaining uh, a commitment to sustainable practices. Uh, uh, while uh, about collaboration, that is something that I also have to mention, uh, we promote cross-functional teamwork, uh, ensuring that diverse perspective, uh, perspectives are brought together to solve uh, complex problems, uh, uh, which uh, uh, with inclusivity and also mutual respect, uh, and making sure that uh, every voice uh, is not only heard, but also valued. And uh, I think that uh, this is uh, great, isn't it? Yeah, what, what, wonderful. I was just uh, uh, amazed about uh, this. Uh, this, you know, really, you really nailed it. Huh? It's uh, it's really impressive. It's really impressive. You know, it's it's exactly what I thought growth mindset meant, but uh, to hear it from you this way with this passion was really, uh, you know, quite quite impressive. Uh, but just to, to, if I can add something, I just recalled <laughs> this morning that I I actually. Uh, 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 learned about the growth mindset a few years ago when uh, uh, I was uh, teaching organizational um, uh, management or leadership courses, and and I, I just remember that uh, uh, recall that uh, uh, you know when uh, CEO Satya Nadella came uh, uh, took over the the responsibility, uh, actually uh, he adopted he embraced this uh, uh, philosophy, this idea uh, on, uh, if I remember correctly, three important pillars uh, back then uh, from what I read, which were customer obsession, inclusiveness, and uh, uh, ensuring everybody feels free to express and not to fear, as you correctly said, you know? Uh, and uh, the third one would be uh, to break down the silos within the, the, the organizations and to work more collaboratively with the one Microsoft, uh, uh, you know, uh, model, cultural shift. So that, those were the three pillars that I remember uh, and the adoption of this learning uh, approach, uh, um, continuous learning approach, which rewards perseverance, endurance, resilience, resilience. Uh, pro progress, you know, not, not today for today, but the, 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 you know, you can do better tomorrow. And, uh, and that reminds me that uh, uh, that drives more confidence and more optimism and collaboration, reduces the fear uh, that discourage experimentation. You know, people are afraid to try, you know, because I'm going to be blamed, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be responsible for something, the blame game, you know, who's, who's the fault this, you know, this blame game type of things that discourage people from being open, uh, trusting, collaborative, inclusive. Uh, so the, the removing that fear, removing the silence uh, that creates that one Microsoft 
cultures. And I remember that in the book that I read, there was, it's, there was a point in which it says that uh, uh, um, the CEO uh, uh, wife uh, gave him a book <laughs> when he took over the responsibility from this uh, uh, Stanford University psychologist, Carol Dweck. And uh, the book was entitled Mindset, the new psychology of success, which Satya Nadella read and appreciated so much to the point that the, 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 the reading I had done in those years said he was wanted to adopt these, these things. And it turned out to be, so moving away from the fixed mindset and moving to the growth mindset, we actually delivered this authentic leadership and uh, uh, enabled the company to uh, uh, change mindset in the sense that most people think that technology alone does the change, you know, turn into a successful company. But in reality, it's uh, the uh, change in uh, mindset that drives openness, experimentation, and that experimentation drives innovation. <laughs> so innovation comes from that mindset and not vice versa. So, well, yeah, this is a turning point. And thank you very much for confirming uh, uh, the growth mindset idea I had in mind and to uh, uh, st uh, stressing the concept of empowerment, empowerment and uh, uh, teamwork. That's really great. So thank you very much. I just wanted to add something more because I remember uh, some of the stuff that I read back then when I read the book from uh, Carol Dweck. Okay, so uh, moving forward, um, Greta, <clears throat> you mentioned something great about this uh, inclusive culture uh, and purpose. Uh, and um, I just, I'm just wondering, um, you know, how is uh, um, this, uh, this, this, this culture that you have at uh, Microsoft uh, enhancing diversity inclusion through accessibility, inclusive design. And uh, uh, do you think that uh, uh, the AI technolog technological innovation will further improve accessibility, inclusion, diversity in the future? Yeah, absolutely. I believe AI-based technological innovations have tremendous potential to enhance accessibility, inclusion, and diversity, which of course uh, are fundamental pillars of this new culture and of this new uh, growth mindset. And we are deeply committing to this principle. So also our uh, approach to AI reflects uh, this, uh, this commitment. Uh, actually, AI can help break down barriers for people with uh, disabilities that you mentioned, providing tools uh, that make uh, technology more accessible. While, for example, in terms of uh, diversity and inclusion, uh, just think about the Microsoft tra Translator, which is a simple example, let me say to understand, uh, that breaks uh, language barriers, uh, fostering better communication and understanding. Uh, and uh, moreover, AI can analyze uh, vast amounts of data to identify and uh, mitigate biases, which is very important. And by leveraging it, uh, we can create more inclusive products uh, and services that serve a wider range of needs uh, and preferences. Uh, let me say that in marketing, this means uh, using AI to enhance uh, customer experiences without uh, compromising their trust. Uh, last but not least, we also prioritize continuous education and training for our teams on ethic ethical AI practices, ensuring that our innovation is guided by these uh, core uh, values. So by embedding, let me say, these principles into our AI initiatives, uh, we aim to foster a future where technology empowers everyone, uh, as our mission said, uh, respects uh, diversity and also promotes uh, inclusion. This is really uh, of uh, paramount importance uh, for, for us and for our company, for our culture and so on. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, you, you couldn't have said it better. <laughs> so that was really, really very, very, very clear. Uh, um, great. That's really, yeah, because, yeah, uh, you know, responsible AI uh, in marketing and other areas, ethical, uh, aspects, you know, the GDPR, the AI Act, that's, you know, all these things about uh, ma management of data and algorithms. And uh, by the way, I, it looks very interesting what you just mentioned, uh, AI for reducing bias. So uh, uh, that's very important because we forget the fact that uh, uh, sometimes we uh, we're afraid of AI because we say, oh my God, AI is going to be uh, so uh, 
challenging and, and risky. And, you know, of course, in everything, there is always uh, um, depend. It's, it's not the eye, the problem. The problem is <laughs> the people, how they use it, but uh, as any tool. Uh, but the, the, the concept is, uh, uh, of course, people have to be concerned about things, you know, like cybersecurity, things about uh, uh, manipulation of data. But that applies to any uh, activity. What's really important, I appreciate the fact you said by bias, the fact that uh, we human beings make bias decisions. <laughs> so <laughs> the fact that the AI can help reduce biases, true. because we always think that human beings don't make mistakes, don't have bias, don't do free, and the machine is bad and... <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, dangerous. In reality, uh, we human beings make a lot of mistakes. And so we have to understand that perhaps uh, 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 AI, if we use it in the proper way, can actually enable uh, even better practice. Of course, the, the, the good and the bad depends also on how we use the tools that applies to anything. So yeah, thank you very much. I'm, I'm very pleased that you are saying that. And um, let's talk about uh, benefits, achievements. Uh, um, what are the major benefits that AI and Gen AI, generative AI, do you think can bring to business and marketing in particular? Now we hear a lot of things about growth, uh, productivity improvements, cost savings, operational efficiency, enhanced customer experience, faster decision making, uh, you know, uh, and improvements. I, I've read many articles that say statistics uh, that say, oh, we've had 20, 30, even up to 40% improvement in productivity in certain areas, maybe, uh, you know, customer service or whatever, you know. And uh, uh, you hear, you know, a lot of studies from marketers on this kind of statistics. Now, what do you think are the major benefits for uh, generative AI for marketing? And uh, uh, what could be the most interesting ones for marketers? So what, what do you think, what you hear talking with companies uh, about uh, where, is, where are the major benefits that companies can bring to the, to the table? So uh, let me say that AI and generative AI, as you mentioned, are really revolutionizing business uh, and also marketing practices. So this is my field, uh, offering numerous benefits across various aspects of operation. Uh, but um, it's better for me to provide you with uh, some examples. Um, so for example, AI significantly boosts productivity and efficiency by automating routine tasks uh, that cost a lot of time to employees uh, and also enhancing decision making. This allows us uh, as, employee, as employees uh, to focus on really strategic activities uh, while AI quickly processes large amounts of data for us, uh, providing accurate insights for better decisions. So uh, time saving uh, while being, uh, uh, let me say, more efficient. In terms of cost savings, uh, AI streamlines the processes, reducing operational costs uh, and also improving ROI the, uh, through more targeted marketing efforts. So we really managed to be more targeting in our campaigns, uh, campaigns <coughs> and in, in all our marketing uh, um, efforts that we bring to the, to the market. <clears throat> Um, it also enables uh, personalized uh, interactions uh, uh, with an impact on the customer experience and on customer satisfaction as well. As well. And um, another example is that uh, as uh, artificial intelligence analyzes uh, vast data sets, uh, it uncovers also patterns and trends uh, that maybe we are not able to identify on our own. Uh, those offering deeper understanding of customer behavior and also market dynamics, uh, as we are in a very dynamic uh, uh, market, market environment. Uh, just another example, uh, generative AI drives innovation by creating new content, uh, new design, and also supporting in ideas, uh, in ideas. so fostering a culture of creativity and uh, continuous improvement. Absolutely. Well, that's that's really great. You know, I, I was thinking about this stuff, uh, productivity, cost savings, efficiency, uh, enhancing customer experience, consumer insight, but also picking up uh, the latest trends and generating uh, new customer personas. But uh, uh, yeah, that's that's really amazing how many things you can do with the, with with AI. And uh, um, so your company is uh, building. Uh, uh, Gen AI capabilities, training, workforce, uh, fostering this culture within and outside 
the company uh, and using it for building segmentation, targeting content, uh, um, you know, all this stuff. And um, yeah, that that's so. Um, which uh, um, you know, um, I, I was wondering when when which are how do you see AI in and Gen AI impacting, in particular, the creative aspects of marketing, you know, AI and creativity. Where do you see this uh, being you, you talked about content, you know, uh, where do you see this uh, having the best impact about, you know, creating, developing? Uh, we've seen a lot of applications in communication, marketing, creativity, advertising, uh, and, and all the kind of stuff in, uh, com in communication, yeah. So let me use here uh, the words uh, of our uh, chairman and CEO, Satanatella. He said that, uh, that this new generation of AI will remove the drudgery of work and unleash creativity. And um, we really recognize the overwhelming stream of data, emails, meetings, and notifications that negatively affect our productivity. So uh, let's try to be honest. Uh, this is something that negatively affects this. And all these tasks also consume valuable time that could be spent on being more creative and on innovative tasks, which are crucial for the success of marketing, as you know better than me. And um, AI transformative power really lies in its ability to manage routine tasks, allowing us to focus on what truly matters. So, Ivo, let me integrate with some data that we recently received. Thank According you. to our Microsoft Work Trend Index, over half of the workers in creative roles are already using AI for research, data analysis, content creation, design, and even creative work. So this means that they are really starting to adopting, adopting AI and also recognizing the benefits that uh, it can provide and uh, it enhances creativity by generating ideas uh, adding team work uh, and providing insights uh, just think about how it can support uh, with the content creation with producing high quality articles uh, with uh, this is something that i uh, very often use uh, suggesting social media posts uh, with related hashtags uh, for example and even in proposing visual elements uh, this is also another thing that i use a lot and um, also data confirms that 87 percent of creative creative professionals uh, are familiar with ai and feel comfortable using this to stimulate uh, creativity and um, what I think is actually very important uh, um, to, to finally answer to your question is to understand that uh, generative AI is not meant to replace uh, human creativity, yeah. but to augment uh, and empower it. So by combining human intelligence, uh, which remains uh, fundamental for uh, marketing uh, activity, yeah. but for, for any for professionals, with AI capabilities, I think that marketing can produce more engaging, uh, relevant, and innovative solution, meeting the evolving needs uh, of uh, our customers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have to uh, confirm that I also, great, I also use uh, <laughs> daily uh, AI, generative AI for my, you know, uh, research activity for uh, writing uh, um, posts uh, and, uh, you know, getting a more effective type of... Uh, Once you try, you know... Yeah, do. yeah, and, and it's, it's, you know, you start, you know, experimenting, as you said, and by trial, uh, you know, by tr testing and trial, uh, you, you learn a lot of stuff and uh, you can go very simple things, like you say, you know, summarize data, uh, drafting documents all the way to analyze customer sentiment and trends and feedback or uh, uh, defining what matrix should you consider to optimize effectiveness of an ad campaign or uh, uh, understanding how to identify the most engaging segments of your audience based on the campaign data or uh, 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 other uh, elements uh, uh, to determine, you know, the, 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 the sentiment, the, the, the analysis and the um, of the data, depending on the quality of the data that you can use to, um, and also, yeah, something that's very important. We don't generally say that, uh, especially because most of the people, uh, I mean, especially uh, um, 
private users rather than companies, they tend to use uh, AI more like, uh, uh, you know, uh, accessing the um, application uh, and the data, whereas, uh, whereas companies perhaps can use it uh, um, with plugins, with uh, uh, incorporating, uh, uh, also integrating their company data into the uh, um, AI models. In that sense, there is much more powerful uh, data that you can use that's combining your data with the, the data of the um, Gen AI uh, uh, application and uh, cloud computing. So uh, the um, yeah, that's that's very in incredible. So AI uh, also we said um, it's very important in many activities, uh, in particular uh, in marketing. Uh, segmentation, dynamic segmentation, uh, content personalization at scale, uh, especially for email marketing, social media marketing, e-commerce, market automation. So um, I wanted to ask you regarding this aspect, uh, so how is uh, uh, Gen AI, at least from your experience, uh, uh, improving marketing effectiveness in terms of dynamic segmentation, content personalization. Uh, when we, let me tell you this thing, Greta, when we teach segmentation of strategic marketing or segmentation targeting position in marketing courses and master's degree, in my case, since 20 years, uh, we've always had, you know, the typical things they teach in marketing, you know, uh, geographic, demographic, psychographic, horizon, you know, all the behavior. And we think of segmentation like once in a while you do that. In reality, AI and the new technology revolutionize even marketing research in the sense that if you have data that's uh, uh, uploaded and uh, constantly updated by your customers, by the mark, you can actually have a dynamic segmentation and you can personalize. You know, generally, you don't have to say, oh my God, now I have a segment. In this case, personalization means you can actually personalize the, uh, the targeting, the, the, the offer, uh, the recommendation, customer by customer, which was a, a dream in the old days. Today, we can actually create those fantastic personalization that back then was impossible. So let me ask you this. How do you see, how do you experience this dynamic segmentation, counter personalization at scale? Uh, and what is the, uh, the actual impact and the use case of this type of uh, uh, innovation? Uh, so this is something which is uh, being used by a lot of our customers and a lot of companies. Uh, uh, just let me provide some examples. For example, in many retail clients, uh, AI is using real-time behavior analysis to dynamically segment visitors. So, so dynamically exactly means which is not something static, uh, but which is something that keeps on making analysis. And so the, this leads to precise targeting and increased conversion. We, we know that these are uh, really fundamental for every marketeer. So, uh, or for example, some e-commerce firms uh, lever are leveraging generative AI for personalized product recommendations, uh, boosting in this case, uh, the click-through rates uh, and also satisf satisfaction scores. So we have uh, actually a lot of use cases wh where um, artificial intelligence is being integrated into into our companies but um, let me just uh, provide some examples uh, uh, of how i use uh, uh, artificial intelligence so for example i use it a lot to suggest uh, as i mentioned before uh, social media posting uh, uh, I make a lot of events uh, and uh, this is supporting me to write better invitations very targeted to the audience that I am addressing I uh, a, a fantastic uh, thing that is doing for myself uh, is, for example, summarizing meetings uh, that I couldn't attend. Uh, I use it a lot for analyzing huge set of data and you know how much time we as marketers usually uh, spend on analyzing data. Well, now I ask uh, artificial intelligence to analyze them for me and I really concentrate on uh, uh, getting insights out of this data. And uh, something that I really make a good use of, oh, oh, well, is uh, translated, for example, standard copies that I received from Microsoft Corpor Corporation. And this helps me save a lot of time. So just imagine how many things uh, I can receive in English that I have to localize uh, for my uh, Italian market. Uh, 
and uh, I also use it to create uh, campaigns, uh, campaign visuals. Uh, um, actually, Ivo, I can provide so many examples yeah, on how uh, I integrated AI in my daily working routine that these interviews should last uh, hours and hours indeed. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no, that, that's, that's, that's really great. Thank you very much for this uh, incredible example. In particular, because of your expertise and leadership role in the B2B marketing practices, I was wondering how does AI uh, really help you in a lead identification, lead uh, qualification, lead scoring, and other uh, things? You, mean, you mentioned many things you know, about data uh, and uh, consumer insight and uh, uh, helping you with the, with the data you receive and the analysis, whatever. But do, do, do you have a, a use uh, in particular of AI is helping you on, on the lead uh, management, the lead scoring, lead identification. And also in, in terms of, well, we generally think of AI like sim optimizing uh, productivity, you know, but we also say AI can be good for not just analyzing patterns uh, re and recommending or content, but also uh, in the most advanced of some of the more advanced areas of AI, there is the predictive uh, uh, role, you know, predictive scores. How is the client going to respond? How is going to, uh, uh, which, which campaign is going to be more, uh, um, uh, which will resonate better with the audience and drive more engagement and more conversion, you know, things like that, uh, enhancing the customer engagement, retention and loyalty, whatever. So there are a number of things that I imagine you can use uh, in the lead management uh, uh, and also in a, um, you know, uh, uh, predictive scores to really uh, um, in, in enhance, improve the, 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 the chance, the, the opportunity, the success of some of the actions uh, uh, for the specific target uh, audience or uh, for each uh, uh, specific customer. So this topic is, of course, very close to me as um, in my daily marketing routine, AI is segmenting audiences in real time based on the current uh, behaviors and interactions and also preferences, uh, ensuring these ways uh, uh, personalized and targeting messages. So, for example, uh, um, for each of our customers, we exactly know what content they interacted with, uh, which event they attended, uh, which trial they activated, and through a scoring mechanism, uh, uh, so here we are talking about prediction, as you mentioned, through a scoring mechanism provided by machine learning, which is artificial intelligence, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we are able to understand how much a customer is engaged with the marketing with our marketing activities, how to further nurture him, and also his propensity to buy. And um, of course, uh, knowing this information is a co is gold for me because I'm able to generate tailored messages, emails, and ads that resonate with individual preferences, driving this way higher engagement and conversion rates. And this really means not doing push marketing, but really doing pull marketing. So I gather information and I give you exactly what you want, when you want, and where you want this type of content or engagement. So this is a, a really a, a big a big changes with uh, which is uh, helping us. And uh, for us uh, marketeers, this saves a lot of time, uh, which can be used to concentrate on, on more creating and valuable things, uh, but it also really improves uh, uh, overall campaign effectiveness, uh, effectiveness and uh, performance. Uh, so this is uh, something that I'm really touching with, uh, with my hands. Yeah, so thank you. That, that's very insightful. So there's a lot of data-driven approaches, yeah. real-time initiatives, and uh, you know that allows you, you know campaign uh, improve uh, campaign effectiveness, personalized content, customer engagement, uh, and uh, improved customer experience. But also helping optimize marketing strategies through automation, uh, improving the conversion rate. And uh, uh, in particular, I think um, um, do you see value in the multimodal capabilities? You know, is this a game changer? In other words, text, image, video, audio, code, <laughs> 3D, all these uh, uh, multimodal things, are they creating real, you know, chatbots and everything? Are they really uh, uh, um, working together to give uh, empowering a lot more uh, uh, productivity, but also a lot more creativity and experimentation? 
Yeah, th th this is providing really a huge contribution to this uh, multimodal, let me say, way of, of uh, uh, creating touch points for, for our customers. Uh, and um, there are also other um, AI-driven initiatives that yield the best performance, uh, such as the uh, personalized content. So we, we already mentioned this a lot of times. Uh, uh, or, for example, targeted events, but also organic campaigns. So um, AI is really supporting in creating comprehensive and engaging campaigns, uh, generating compelling customer stories, for example, because we know what is relevant to other customers and also driving digital activities like, like uh, social media boosting, but also paid media uh, campaigns. Uh, and, and this... Uh, is also impacting a lot of key metrics that we, we usually uh, use to measure the, the success uh, of our initiatives. Um, in my case, for example, what I tend to measure when I have to say if a campaign has his, uh, uh, let me say, successful of, or, or not, uh, is, for example, the engagement rates, uh, the, the cost per activity in case of events, uh, the new acquired contacts uh, and the targeted account I've been able to engage with. Uh, so these are, uh, these are all uh, um, key, uh, let me say, performance metrics, uh, which are really important to us. Uh, and thanks to the uh, artificial intelligence, we are really measure not only to, to we are only sorry, uh, able not only to measure them, but also to influence uh, them. Absolutely. Yeah, that's always a big thing. You know, what, uh, what's the right measure with the right KPI? for the success of a campaign, you know, lead generation, engagement rates, conversion rates, improved ROI, um, return on ad spend, optimized content and uh, call to action, all this kind of stuff related to satisfaction, loyalty and retention. Uh, and uh, yeah, those are big ones, but I imagine that as a B2B marketing uh, expert, you also use a lot of these uh, things, as you mentioned, for uh, 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 impact, uh, uh, better impact of events, which is a big thing, of course, in the B2B area. But as you mentioned, but also, uh, I don't know how much you use that also for boosting uh, um, you and your teams, the other teams in the company, uh, things like uh, search engine marketing initiative or search engine optimization, stuff like that. Uh, we are not using it specifically in Italy because these are activities which are usually led by, the, by our Microsoft Corporation because mm -hmm. they require huge investments and so on. Yeah. So we have a dedicated team uh, um, uh, using this kind of tactics uh, and therefore benefit from artificial intelligence also for this. But of course, uh, they are using it uh, a lot. A lot, yeah. I, I, I was reading uh, uh, in the last few weeks uh, something about uh, all the amazing, uh, uh, huge, uh, 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 very impressive uh, 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 initiatives that uh, Microsoft is undertaking uh, globally and in particular in Italy. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, the other day I was reading an interesting article saying that uh, your uh, uh, vice chairman Brad Smith mm -hmm. recently mentioned that the AI technology will make Italians even more creative and productive. So he actually mentioned Italy in his uh, recent speech that he thinks that in particular, because Italians are so creative, mm -hmm. that will make Italians even more creative and productive, which yeah. brings me to the next question that is how Microsoft Italy is helping the country evolve with AI and to leverage on its transformative power so I know that I've, I've heard about Microsoft AI Lab, L-A-B, uh, for Italy and other initiatives uh, uh, you guys have been uh, undertaking. So uh, this is interesting. And what's your take about uh, the level of readiness of Italian firms about AI and Gen AI? How are they moving in, in adopting uh, to be early adopters? on this thing, especially, you know, the small and medium size, I mean, the large ones, I would imagine, but small and medium size, how, uh, 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 you know, how, how much are they embracing and becoming early adopters of this stuff? And what is Microsoft doing now for Italy? Uh, uh, what is intention with this AI lab? So as you can imagine, we have a huge responsibility for our uh, country. And so Microsoft Italy is playing a pivotal role in advancing the country's capabilities with AI 
through the initiative that you already mentioned, which is the AI Lab, where LAB stands for uh, Learn, Adopt, and Benefit from. Benefit from, sorry. Um, we launched uh, this program uh, last year in September, and now this is something which has been adopted by many other countries in Europe. So we have also um, create. We have been created also in this way, and so uh, some other are. Let, let me say, following our example. Uh, um, and uh, there is a huge need to provide readiness on AI, but especially on, on responsible AI into Italian companies and not only. And this is why we created uh, this uh, initiative. Uh, I have to say that, of course, uh, we have to scale and therefore we are not uh, alone in this effort. <clears throat> but we are supported by our partner ecosystem that uh, with us uh, is uh, creating a, a customized program for businesses, uh, public administration, but also professionals and students uh, aimed at uh, maximizing uh, the, the positive impact uh, of new technologies in a responsible way, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, uh, and supporting the adoption of uh, generative uh, AI. Um, in Italy, but also abroad, actually, companies uh, have some uh, common challenges in uh, AI integration uh, um, into their, uh, let me say, businesses, uh, uh, like, for example, data privacy concerns, uh, lack of skilled AI talent, uh, but also the complexity <coughs> of integrating in general AI with existing systems. Uh, and so probably in this way, we can uh, support companies, but they can also invest sometimes uh, uh, to um, overcome this by, for example, prioritizing data ethics, uh, investing in AI training programs, uh, and for example, benefit from uh, uh, programs like the one that we, we launch on the market, but also partnering with AI experts uh, to support uh, implementation and integration into their, into their uh, business. Uh, absolutely, yeah, that's, that, that, that anticipates a little bit <laughs> what I was about to, to, to ask you also, uh, that is if you put yourself in the shoes of your, you know, the, the, your client or the, the companies that the average company that uh, now is thinking about implementing AI in their, you know, the, not to uh, the, you know, the famous uh, FOMO fear of missing out, <laughs> the, the, trying to be an early adopter and trying to, you know, to, to really uh, um, um, be engaged, to be very proactive about it. Um, what should they do? You know, how would they build their AI roadmap and uh, uh, action plan to really incorporate this into their business uh, uh, operations, the business model? Um, because I read a lot of stuff like, you know, identify the most impactful use cases, uh, establish a robust uh, governance and control measures, do the right upskilling and training of the workforce, manage the risk and things also, you know, um, scale up the thing, uh, automate time consuming and tedious tasks, as we said before, also because they may be prone to human error or reduce, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the, you know, the waste of time and to try to do be more, more effective, prioritize the selected pilot use cases and work on data quality and uh, infrastructures and stuff like that. But what would be really uh, your advice, your, you know, uh, top 10, top five things to do to, to your clients as how do I approach my AI roadmap? What should I do? Where should I start? So actually, there's a, a huge advice that comes before uh, all of these, uh, these uh, things, uh, which is for myself, uh, that everyone has to bear in mind that the generative AI is not a threat. It's just uh, an opportunity to embrace. So the sooner uh, every company uh, approach the AI journey, the more they will be able to use it strategically. Uh, so the, the first av advice is... Um, uh, just uh, don't be scared by uh, generative AI, but uh, really try to understand which are the benefits uh, uh, for your company and start uh, uh, step by step uh, integrated uh, it uh, uh, just to realize uh, which can be the real benefits uh, for the company and also for the employees. Uh, 
Um, and I think that uh, if uh, they start uh, integrating it uh, in their daily working routine, uh, as we already said, uh, they won't be able to do without it, uh, as uh, it's uh, helping everyone, everybody in uh, so many things uh, and um, also in making a good and valuable use of uh, everyone's time. So um, there will be, uh, now we are lead really leading uh, a hedge in artificial intelligence, uh, but there will be more more to come and so we will have uh, more emerging trends and more things coming so uh, my, my really number one advice is uh, start now so yeah. don't wait uh, don't, don't wait at our time don't wait to be 100 percent sure on how to uh, implement uh, these uh, artificial intelligence um, uh, things uh, inside your company but just uh, start now and uh, I'm sure that everyone will see the, the real benefits uh, and will understand uh, day after day uh, what how to do more and how to be uh, to make a very good use of it. So adopting the growth mindset coach. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Take <laughs> the risk, <laughs> don't fear of failure, and okay. learn from uh, even from mistakes. Absolutely, and that, that's that's really um, yeah. But the AI journey, it's really a great advice to marketers. You know, start uh, soon, start yeah. well, start experimenting and trying to see which area uh, uh, may have a better impact. Uh, pick wins whatever uh, but also stick to your strategy you know start with your goals your vision yeah? and then try to see how to fit this thing in your to optimize uh, the use of that and uh, finally uh greta thank you really for your patience and the time the, the very you. precious time you're dedicating to this interview uh looking forward um uh future trends uh, so this is i know it's difficult because uh, since uh, <laughs> open ai really uh, i think it was november uh, 2022 uh, was actually uh, ex ex experimenting, you know, uh, launching the chat GPT. And then, of course, then we had the uh, 2023, the first time we started to use it. And then, of course, we all the partnership now that uh, you guys have with uh, with OpenAI and the others. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, people are getting used to it. Uh, and then, you know, myself also, you know, uh, learning how to use Copilot from uh, your company and other applications from other companies uh, and experimenting. And so, uh, but this is evolving so fast. It's really so fast that it's almost difficult to predict what's going to be in six months, <laughs> 12 months, because, I mean, if you read the statistics from the, the, the big FinTank, the big, you know, experts on uh, AI and uh, uh, transformation technology, they say there's going to be even, you know, McKinsey uh, yeah. uh, uh, analysis about the four, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the expertise that this is going to be growing to uh, huge numbers in the next few, uh, uh, in the next decade, the next few years. So, uh, yeah, it's a really very impressive. And uh, mm, we see that uh, a lot growing very fast. So it's difficult to predict where it's going to go, but what are some of the emerging trends in AI and digital, especially related to digital marketing and to marketing that you are most excited about today? So if you think about marketing in particular and uh, Gen AI, AI and marketing, where do you see some of the most exciting trends? Where are they leading to? And what are the latest innovations that are really get you excited and you say, oh, this is really a turning point. This is really, uh, uh, um, you know, a pivotal moment for marketing because of this uh, new uh, innovations. So as you said, this is a fast, uh, fastly evolving environment. So it's really difficult to answer your question. But uh, what I can say to you, looking ahead, uh, the probably the emerging trends uh, in AI and digital marketing that uh, excite me more uh, uh, include uh, advancements, uh, for example, in natural language processing for more uh, uh, conversational AI interactions. Uh, also enhance uh, predict predictive analytics uh, for better customer insights. Uh, and uh, what I really like, and we will see something, the integration of AI with the augmented reality and also virtual reali reality for immersive marketing experiences. Uh, so this is uh, especially for some uh, consumer and retailer companies. Uh, 
And uh, this innovation, I think, uh, promised to elevate customer engagement uh, and drive uh, even more personalized marketing strategies in the future, which is something that we like. Uh, so personalization, but, she, but uh, it's also a, a really uh, um, tangible trend in the market because uh, customers also like a lot of personalization. So I think that uh, we will see a lot of uh, uh, good things here. And I'm, I'm really sure, excited about this. I, I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure that even, you know, computer vision and other many other uh, areas are definitely going to be, especially with connected objects and stuff like that, that that's mm -hmm. going to change or revolutionize. Yeah, this is really... This is really, yeah, I, I, I agree with you about this thing. I, I'm also very excited about the, the, the visual part, you know, videos and stuff like that, yeah. that. There is a lot of creativity that can be done there and improve significantly the creative uh, process and, and quality and support. So I, I would like to end this thing saying uh, uh, one thing that I also, using a little bit AI for my activities, the journey, I, I see the value. Let me learn from you. No, no, I'm just saying that in my little uh, uh, daily activities, I see the value, not only in terms of productivity, but also in terms of creativity. And uh, I see that uh, uh, it's it's definitely uh, uh, um, uh, exciting to explore. So my, my last uh, uh, word of suggestion to people in general would be uh, to be curious, to be curious. Yeah to be curious, to, to have that mindset. You know, if I can add to your growth mindset, I would say curiosity also, <laughs> to be curious enough to learn, to explore, to test, you know, and to see what this thing can do for you and uh, uh, to, 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 to just uh, have the courage and the commitment in, to do that. And so I'm, I'm glad that many are doing already that. So I think this is really, this is great. And uh, it, it's helping a lot in many, in many areas from business to social media to, um, you know, um, um, the various activities. So, uh, um, yeah, the, Greta, this was really a very wonderful. Thank you very much. And I'm very pleased they also mentioned that uh, in terms of our responsibility uh, uh, and uh, sustainability, uh, the company is doing uh, uh, a lot. Uh, they, I, I read things about reaching carbon neutrality goals in the next mm -hmm. few years. You know, so there is a lot of, so this is also very important. So I think this is a, um, a, a, an excellent, an excellent uh, uh, transformation uh, opportunity and uh, marketing will be uh, an area uh, in which uh, um, sales and marketing and uh, CRM where uh, AI, Gen AI are really already uh, revolutionizing the market. And I think uh, I tend to confirm that uh, uh, even the people I talk to, there's a lot of uh, uh, engagement and it's growing very fast. So I'm glad that you're confirming all these things. Thank you very, very much for your uh, uh, very precious, uh, insightful, uh, fantastic <laughs> contributions. And it was really great talking to you again, meeting you again. I really look forward to uh, engaging in new collaborations with you uh, because I know there is a lot more to learn from, uh, from this in marketing, but uh, thank you very, very much. We, we learned a lot. We learned a lot. Talk thanks to you a soon. lot um, to you. For me, it's been a pleasure. And so thanks a lot for this opportunity. There's a lot uh, coming. So we will have the chance to talk again. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thanks you a lot. You too. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.